started episode three of the Canalto Hotels AJHL Coaches Show from the Sherwood Park Arena. Pleased to be joined today by the head coach of the Spruce Grove Saints, uh, Bram Stephen. I'm Dave Dawson. Uh, Bram, uh, first of all, I guess, um, how would you describe the 2018-19 season for the Saints? Well, we've gotten off to an okay start statistically. Um, we're doing a, a fairly sound job of playing without the puck. Our shots against has been pretty good. Got a lot, a lot of young players in our roster. We, we've only got 10 returning Saints from last year and two other veterans. So... There's a lot of first-year players we're bringing into the lineup, and there's been some, you know, adjustments and a little bit of a learning curve. But overall, we're we're moving, you know, north. We're we're starting to make some improvement in the day to day, and and we've had a couple hiccups, but uh, for the most part, uh, it's a young group that we're we're optimistic about. There are a number of teams also that are moving north in the North Division, no pun intended. We'll get to some particulars in a second. But uh, uh, for those maybe who don't know a lot about the AJHL, are fairly new to it, you're into your second season after coaching at the ACAC level. Um, what's the transition been like for you, and how would you compare the level of play between the ACC and the AJHL? Yeah, well, you know, I, I was in the AJHL previous to being at McEwen, and when you're uh, coaching the ACAC level, we wanted to make sure when we got there that – we took care of home base and we recruited a lot of players out of this league. So, uh, yeah, it's only the second year as a head coach, but I've been familiar with this league for about a decade now. Um, some of the differences that, that you see from this level to the ACAC, first of all, there's some higher end players at this level that will move on to the NCAA Division One level. Some guys are impact guys in the Western League. Um, guys are drafting the NHL. And you certainly don't get that, that you know, that 10% of high end players in the ACAC. Um, the players at that level, they have a lot more to manage, obviously, being student-athletes. Um, in a lot of cases, you know, financially, things are a little bit tight, and we need to understand as coaches at that level that, that uh, hockey's part of their life. It's not the entire life, whereas here the players are very driven to get better so they can get to that college life. Um, players at that level adjust a little bit better tactically to things. You can give them an X's and O's right in the middle of a game, and, and they can pick it up pretty quick. At this level, it takes a little bit longer, but the players are quicker to adjust to their habits as far as individual skill set, their technical package, some individual tactics. You can see change and development a lot quicker at this level. There's been great individual skill sets in the Spruce Grove Saints for a number of years, and uh, I guess even at the coaching level, you look at guys who preceded you, the Jason McKees, the Steve Hamiltons. What makes you a good head coach, and uh, what's that been like to take on that role and continue to breed success to the Spruce Grove Saints? Well, I think, you know, watching the Saints from afar the last few years and when watching the teams that uh, Jay put together and before that Steve Hamilton, um, they had they had different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, Steve's teams played a lot more emotionally charged. They're physical, they're fast, they're hard, they're a bit bigger. Jay's teams were fast and calculated and very tactical and can kind of knife you apart by just by X's and O's of the game and, and taking advantage of mistakes. Um, I think that the general thing with the Saints is it's been a team that plays deep with four lines. They've had a lot of speed, a lot of tenacity, and, and it's something that we hope to keep going. As far as just how our coaching staff will be viewed down the road, that's really not up to us to decide. We're just worrying about our process one day at a time and, and, and looking down one year at a time as far as recruiting players and, and trying to carry on that Saints legacy as best as we can. If you put your finger on maybe one thing that has made the Spruce Grove Saints, it's probably hard to put one on it, but that has made the Spruce Grove Saints program so successful for the last decade. Is there something that sticks out above the rest? To me, there's two things. Number one, it's depth in the roster. Um, generally speaking, we're a four-line hockey team, a team that can roll out 60. I mean, tonight, for example, we'll have four new players in the roster from last night, and we feel very comfortable with that. Um, so that's something that I've noticed in the previous Saints teams and it's something that we've tried to carry forward and it's something that we believed in when I was coaching at McEwen as well. Um, the second thing about, about the Saints is, is I think they've done a very good job previously and I'm uh, as a group inside that dressing room I feel strong about it too. There's a lot of high character people and, and you put those two things together a lot of times it's, it's, it's a good formula for success. Um, you know, skill hurt helps. We've been fortunate to recruit some of the best players from the Alberta area, and we've stuck to that. We, we've, we've tried to take a stronghold of recruiting strong Albertans, and, and it's worked out so far. Since 2010, there's only been two champions in this league, one of them the Spruce Grove Saints, obviously the Brooks, Brooks Bandits. You think of the comparison between the two, you almost think of the word excellence. What does the word excellence mean to you as a coach, and how does that breed right through the roster and the way you approach every game? 
Yeah, it's something we talk about all the time. Um, excellence to us is, is making sure maximum effort goes into every part of every day, whether that's at school, um, what, you know, preparing yourself physically, mentally, and then when you come to the, the rank, giving maximum effort both mentally and physically. Um, so that to us is our standard of excellence. It means being mentally tough, and for us mental toughness means separating act from feel. So you might not feel great every day, but you put in your very best and you separate those two things. Um, yeah, that's, that's excellence to us, and, and, and we try to pursue that every single day. We don't take days off. Is there, is there a level of accountability, maybe a chart that you go through with each player and say, here are your expectations when it comes to academics, here are your expectations when it comes to the way you treat your body? Is, is there some kind of contract that continues to breed that year in, year out for Spruce Grove Saints? Well, I can't really speak to previously our coaching staff getting there. What we, we do and we've taken on is, is we make sure we have a four-prong approach, and I alluded to it a minute ago. We have a tactical game plan for each player, a technical game plan for each player, mental and physical. And that's, that's, that's something we've stolen from Hockey Canada and their program of excellence. And uh, it's something that we, we take a lot of pride in. Our players have a lot of individual attention on them, and our, and our coaching staff takes leads in different areas, and we support each other in other areas of those four prongs. All right, well, we've generally asked each coach to kind of go position by position and uh, assess the uh, the roster. And we have uh, an interest of keeping this south of 15 minutes. Maybe we'll abbreviate a bit of that. Um, just looking at, obviously, one big omission from the roster, Chris Van, o Van Osshaw, aging out to 51 goals, now gone on to the NCAA level. Uh, what, how would you describe the ability to fill that role? And obviously, it's you can't fill that role completely on the roster, can you? No, you can't. And, and the other odd offensive player that's really hard to replace is Josh Harris. And Josh, just shift in, shift out, made the game easier for his teammates and it allowed success to, to happen for everyone involved and statistically. And, and that's a lot of offense to take away in two guys, and it's, it isn't something you replace. And our team has struggled a little bit having that same offensive dimension to its game, and, and it's going to have to be collective and team effort. We've had a lot of guys step up and other guys that have played well but just haven't been rewarded statistically yet and hopefully over time that, that they're able to break through. 16 different players have scored on your roster so far, and uh, m maybe would the absence of those players speak to a little bit of the transition time on the power play with uh, the Saints seem to have been trying to find their stride on the power play so far this season? Yeah, we, and the other thing to that is we give all, all of our players opportunities on the power play this time of the year, and so we're not rolling out two units every every night or even one unit in some cases are you know even if the game is tighter on the line we got a unit on the ice that maybe the other team doesn't expect uh, because we want to make sure our players have an opportunity to develop in all situations and then we'll cut that down later on in the year and so because of that last year we did the same thing there were times Chris wasn't on the ice for a power play and Josh wasn't on the ice for a power play and we were able to have team success this year it's come a little bit slower and that's just been our MO from day one we haven't played as well without with the puck part of me this year uh, without the puck, we might be might be actually better than we were last year as, as a team. Um, the power play is something we work on lots, and, and hopefully it comes around a bit here. All right, so rather than going right down the roster, top to bottom, are there three or four players maybe you can highlight? I imagine a guy like Parker Soretsky uh, comes across your mind as well, but are there a couple guys that you can talk about, maybe some of the things that they've done well, maybe a few that many might not realize won't show up on the stats sheet, but guys that have impressed you? Well, obviously, offensively, Parker's been our leader so far this year. Parker's uh, very strong on the puck. He protects the puck very well down low. He's hard to, to get off of it. He's elusive with the puck. He's deceptive. Um, and, and he makes creative plays. He sees the ice very well. He's a playmaker first. Um, he's, he's been big for us. Him and Cam Mitchell have had a lot of success together. Cam is more of a hunter of the puck. He, he's, he takes away time and space quickly. He's able to... Uh, find seams and, and sit in space so a guy like Parker can find him. Those two have had a lot of offensive success together so far this year. Defensively, I mean, Corey Babichuk is an elite skater back there. Um, he can turn numbers in your favor on the rush very quickly. And, and because of that, we've had some, uh, some offense from the back end. Uh, TJ Lloyd is our captain, and, and he's a fairly dynamic player. And the thing about TJ is he's never really put up big numbers, and he's just starting to find his offensive game at, at 19, which is really good for him, really good for Bowling Green down the road. Um, and yet we've had really good contributions from all three of our goalies. Matt Davis at 17 years old has been fantastic so far. He hasn't had a bad performance yet. Um, Liam McCloskey's come in right at the start of camp as a 20-year-old, and he's a bit of a journeyman, and he's a, he's a wonderful player and a wonderful person and, and works hard every day. And now Brady Stevens has been in the net, and all three of them have been strong. So our goaltending, although inexperienced, has been solid so far too. 
And I imagine looking at the roster right now, at three 20-year-olds, I believe, at halfway to where the cap is for the Alberta Junior League. Does does that maybe give you the idea that, you know, obviously the success, the team will get better week in and week out, but does that excite you, the opportunity that potentially you can add more more experience if you need to down the road? Yeah, we could. Uh, and the right situation's got to be there for us. And last year, uh, fortunately enough, there were a lot of good situations where we could add at, at that 20-year-old level. Um, this year, it, it hasn't quite been the right situation for us yet, and we haven't really pulled the trigger yet. Um, and really, you can't dictate that. I mean, you can go looking for it, and we can do our research and our homework on it. But at the end of the day, we have to make sure we make a good deal for the organization, short term and long term. And and that's you know that's Rob's domain, and and uh, and it's a tough tough job, you know. So it, it's uh, it's something that that we're gonna as collectively as a staff, we we help and assist in that. And, and if the right deal's there, we do it. And if not, we're very happy with our young group and, and it'll take us as far as it'll take us and we feel we still have a good chance to have success this year. All right, Brian, well, maybe one more for you. Um, I'm all about uh, development and mentorship. I think in any level it's important, be it in sport or in life. Is there somebody who's coached you along the way, maybe somebody who's given you some life success that you've kind of grabbed onto that's allowed you to have success uh, throughout life for you? Um, well, obviously, take your leads from your parents, and I'm fortunate to, uh, to have that that help. Um, I got two amazing parents that way, and um, yeah, I mean, as far as hockey influences, I was I was lucky as a kid. I Lee Foglin coached me for for several years, and just talking about being a good person and 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 doing things the right way, he was all about that and was excellent from a development standpoint. Taught me a lot about the game and and the game within the game. Um, and then in coaching, um, Fran Gal, uh, I got to coach with him in Drayton Valley. He's, he's, he's someone I still lean on today, and, and he's got a little bit of a bite to him, which maybe I didn't have at a young age, and it's really helped me to uh, have that. And then from a developmental standpoint, the, the Hockey Alberta program in general, I, I've, I try to get involved in as much as possible, and I, I get a lot out of that as far as just assistance and, and meeting people and networking and and development. Uh, Barry Midori, who leads that program from a coach mentorship sh standpoint, is somebody that is that has really had a big influence on me, and somebody I I hold in very high regard. I, I think he's um, incredibly knowledgeable. Maybe can't, I can't think of another coach mentor in the whole country that has as much knowledge and, and to pass on, and, and that's something I've really been fortunate to have in my corner. All right, and maybe one last one for you, Fran Gow. His name keeps coming up, and I imagine it'll be continually as these coaches show continue uh, to roll. Do, do you have a personal goal for yourself, for your coaching career, uh, anything like that? Uh, I know it's hard to foresee the years ahead, but do you have a personal goal for yourself? Yeah, I think originally for me, I wanted to be a, a college coach. Though when I when I started, that was my goal, and had that opportunity to make you. And at a certain point, you you go, okay. You know, my wife and I were still young, young family, and maybe it's an, an opportunity to get into the junior level and see what happens after that. But uh, we, we stepped out of that stream, I, I guess, to to pursue something like this. And uh, the ownership group here with the Saints and the management group has been fantastic support. And to be perfectly honest, as, as a family, both within our coaching staff and a family at home, um, we're, we're happy where, where things are at with that. And, and uh try not to look too far ahead you, you, we, you know as a hockey team and as a person and as a family man we just worry about the, the present and trying to make ourselves better for tomorrow well bram i really appreciate your time and uh, thanks so much for joining us today best of luck the rest of the season thank you very much appreciate it thanks so much for joining us today in the canalta hotels ajhl coaches show on behalf of jordan miller our camera guy we thank you for watching and stay tuned for another episode of the canalta hotels ajhl coaches show coming soon